Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Welcome to the edge of New Orleans Square, which currently, spring of 2021, is just covered, covered in lines. Pirates of the Caribbean, no doubt, one of the most classic and perfect Disneyland attractions of all times. The last big attraction that Walt Disney himself worked on always brings in a massive audience. But during the age of social distancing, you can see that it has turned our sweet New Orleans Square into just one massive line as that queue expands all the way over to the outer layers of the rivers of America and flooding the streets of New Orleans Square. But it's not totally a bad thing because one of the winds that we have in this moment is for the first time ever, you can sit at tables all along the edge of the rivers of America and have a once in a lifetime breakfast, lunch, dinner, or just a quick snack, hanging out with your friends with all the jazz music playing and the Mark Twain working its way down the rivers of America. And we even get into these little areas over here, truly unique spots to sit on the edge of where the rafts would typically be to take us to the pirate's lair. And this nice little dining spot that has popped up. So yeah, New Orleans Square is covered in lines, covered in people, but it's also covered in once and a fan's lifetime opportunities to find a new place to sit and to chill and enjoy maybe the best land in all of Disneyland in a way you've never been able to do it before. As we come up to the edge, here's Fowler's Harbor. I won't bore you with my love of that. I feel like I do it way too much. We come over here to the edge of the Haunted Mansion, which during the close down went through a massive overhaul, which is bringing back the fans just in droves. You see up over the edge there, that very top point, that is the elephant's mausoleum, where the elephant is buried in the pet cemetery. And if you look at that little figure up on the top, that is the mouse that I believe scared the elephant to death. But as we come back through New Orleans Square, we see this thoroughfare being possibly the most busiest one in all of Disneyland. But we also see a lot of folks waiting to get in to this perennial favorite, the Haunted Mansion. And if you notice, we've got some trees missing here in the middle. We got some trees missing there to expand even more the Pet Cemetery. But a lot like the holidays that we've all gotten used to, we see the line for the Haunted Mansion expanding here over into Magnolia Park. So, you know, uh, one of the things that we've given up during this time is Magnolia Park. You can no longer get your beignets, get your mint julep, come over here, sit on a bench, listen to the fountain. Because it is currently flooded with people working their way around the switchbacks to try to get to revisit an old friend, the Haunted Mansion. There's a little Disney Spring magic for you. We have cast member trying to escort all the various different baby ducks back to the river. So this quiet spot removed, we're used to that in the holidays. But as we work back in the New Orleans Square, you really see that this part of the park is covered with people, maybe more so than others, because of all of its narrow pathways, things that probably wouldn't be done today if they were to create a New Orleans Square. 
beignet line has been pretty insane. Not too crazy at the moment. These restrooms always back up. But you can stand out here and hear the sounds of the witch doctor that lives on that balcony on Front Street. Up here and there, you see that the Club 30... How you guys doing? See the Club 33 has their photo op for members over there and a merchandise stop. Where they've got a Club 33 vintage Disneyland sign out. And then as we come through here, some of the most unique shops in all of Disneyland, really creating such a different vibe. I love that New Orleans Square isn't all the same merchandise over and over again. The perfumery. The crystal such a different vibe all through here and a narrow place but you can really enjoy all of these various balconies and you can see the perfumes up on the shelves so much great storytelling here on these balconies this is the bridge that connects the restaurant over to the club but i do love how these shops add such a unique vibe. It was the same merchandise, it would kind of ruin it. Then here we have the courtyard over to the French market. And right there, you see that massive line of folks waiting for pirates. Let's, let's backtrack back. Work our way through the puzzle. So it appears something new that could be happening is Le Baton Rouge might become a quick service gumbo restaurant. That seems to be the way that they're flirting with all of this. Now it would make sense from the logistics because we have the Club 33 lounge and restaurant above us. So food is already being prepared in this area. So to take some of that cuisine, we also have the Blue Bayou Kitchen. These are all shared resources for all these destinations. So to add in another food vendor here, not that impossible because so much food is already being made here for the salon in Club 33, the dining area of Club 33, and Blue Bayou. So yeah, we can add another one in to accompany the French market. It has been announced that the Blue Bayou will open at the end of the month giving the hardest of hardcore at Disneyland a sit-down restaurant, a restaurant with a bit more experience, and a favorite to just sit there and listen to those boats go by. And here we have the old door to 33, but it has moved up around the bend to the left. And then as we work our way just back a little bit further, we get to take in, once again, taking the buildings, cutting apart. See a lot of stars up on the East Coast, in Philly, DC, down in New Orleans. A little cafe table selling the story that somebody goes to those French stores and enjoys the dinner. And then just so much storytelling on all these balconies. But the narrowness of this makes it feel like you are truly inside of the French Quarter. Bringing back to life, or bringing, bringing a part of America to the West Coast, created in a time where not everyone just jumped on a plane and flew where they wanted to fly at the drop of a dime. Here we see the dining area of the club, small balcony, not a lot of outdoor eating, overlooking this balcony down here. But as you can see, the layering of people through here is intense as we take the folks, keep them out in the thoroughfares of Disneyland to keep everyone out in the open air, to keep us from being bottlenecked together indoors. You can see the cast member here counting people inside. 
can see heavy use of this little porch over on Royal Street. And one of my favorite subtle details here is the Walt Disney initials and the Roy Disney initials there on the balcony. And looky there, up to the distance, we can see none other than Captain Jack Sparrow. There he is. See him just entertaining folks as they... <laughs> just see him entertaining folks as they work through the switchbacks, giving them a nice little reward for making their way through a line that goes all the way back there. Definitely a unique time to be in New Orleans Square. But when you think about the beauty of this land, all of the rich storytelling, a little bit of discovery for people at different budgets and different experience levels, but a sit-down restaurant, two world-class attractions, two of the fans most favorite, and then an area in the park it still has street names letting you know exactly where you're at even though you may feel a little bit of turn around inside California's very own French Quarter such an amazing part of the park to be able to experience and stand back and just see all the details And we work our way back around towards the edge of Magnolia Park, where the old Frontierland train station resides, making way for the new New Orleans Square station. And you see these folks on the edge of Magnolia Park, but we just can't get into the real thing for now because we need that extra space for all the citizens of Disneyland wanting to take on the return of the Haunted Mansion. It's busy in here, but everybody's keeping a safe distance. The lines are moving fast and everybody seems happy to get to return to the greatness that is New Orleans Square. Right here. the line here, watch these people when they go around we'll Pirates. Friends, thank you so much for taking a walk around New Orleans Square with me. It is covered with lines. The line for the Haunted Mansion and the line for the Pirates of the Caribbean spilling out into the walkways, overtaking the park. But nobody's complaining about it because two of the best attractions Disney ever created, the last two the Walt Disney himself ever had a hand on and such monumental parts of the Disneyland story. Thank you so much for taking this walk around New Orleans Square with me in spring of 21. I can't wait to come back here in the summer and do it with you all over again to see what's different and how this favorable land keeps evolving. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a comment below. What's your favorite part of New Orleans Square? When you come back, where's the first place you're going to go? What's the first treat you're going to eat? And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell because every single time I'm at Disneyland, I always go live and try to take you with me. So friends, until the next time I see you, wandering around Royal Street, lost inside of California's very own French Quarter. I'll see you back here on the channel with more Disneyland news.